So there's a lot of talk out there in the world about routines and high performance routines and routines to help you be more successful. I would argue that the bedtime routine is the most important routine that you can implement in your life because that leads to you having a better night's sleep, which means you're more likely to complete your morning routine, which means you're more likely to have a good and successful day. So if you've ever wondered how to get a good bedtime routine, this video is definitely for you. Hi, my name is Tiffany Toombs. I'm a high performance mindset coach that has worked with thousands of people across the world to help them master their mind and step into their full potential. So in this video, I'm going to share with you what you need to consider when you're creating your bedtime routine, how you can be more consistent and implement this bedtime routine with total success. And finally, I'm going to share with you the most common mistakes that people make that stop their bedtime routine from being truly effective. So what should you include in your bedtime routine? There is no one size fits all answer that works for everybody. You have to figure out what works best for you. Now, because this is a bedtime routine, it needs to be a routine that helps us wind down and relax as we drift off to sleep. If we are busy and go, go, go and stressing ourselves out or the body out during the evening, there is less chance that we'll be going to sleep. So you don't want to do a big workout in the evening, for example, because that amps your body up and it makes it harder for your body to go to sleep at an appropriate time. So you might want to consider what are things that you generally go to to help you relax. Think about things like meditation or journaling or reflecting on the day. You might like to read a book, take a hot shower, drink a cup of decaffeinated tea. You might like to take a hot bath. Anything that helps you slow down and relax is something that you should look at including in your bedtime routine. Now, you don't need to include a lot of things in your bedtime routine, and if having to do 10 different things just to get ready for bed stresses you out, then I would recommend cutting that down to choosing two to three activities that really helps you relax and settle in so that you can go to sleep. Before I share with you how you can implement your bedtime routine with more success, I would love to hear from you. What are some things that help you relax that you are going to include in your bedtime routine? Go to the comments below and let me know. Let's create a big brainstorm list for everybody to look at in the comments about things that help people relax. One of the most common reasons that I hear from people that they don't have success when creating and implementing their bedtime routine is that they get so busy in the evening trying to get everything done that they actually forget what time it is or they lose track of time. Or maybe they get really involved in their Netflix show and all of a sudden it's two in the morning. So I have a solution to fix that that's going to help you have more success. Now we want to ideally get eight hours of sleep a night. Yes, I know you've probably been living off of less than that. However, studies show that the optimal level of sleep for all human beings is eight hours. In fact, they did a study on US Navy SEALs. These are like the fittest of the fittest human beings. And for the first month of the study, they had them sleep for eight hours a night. They then tested their physical and their mental capacity. In month number two, they gave the SEALs six hours of sleep a night. This is just two hours of sleep deprivation. They again tested their physical and their mental capacity, and they found that there was a statistically significant drop in performance in both physical and mental capacity. In month number three, they had the SEALs again have six hours of sleep. They tested their physical and mental capacity, but they also asked the SEALs if they thought that they were performing at a month one capacity or a month two capacity. And what they found was amazing. The SEALs, for the most part, ranked themselves as coming back to the month one capacity. But what the results showed is they were still functioning at the month two capacity, which was a reduced capacity. So not only does sleep deprivation by even just two hours decrease your physical and mental capacity, but it also 
alters your perception of how well you think that you are performing. So we want to get eight hours of sleep a night. So this is where we want to start. What is the time that you want to wake up in the morning? Let's say you want to wake up at 6 a.m. Then you're going to reverse engineer it so that you get eight hours of sleep. So if you want to get up at 6 a.m., then you need to be going to sleep by 10 p.m. And so you can set an alarm in your phone to go off at 10 p.m. every night. This is going to be the final lights out reminder for you. Then you're going to set an alarm for one to two hours before. Depending on how long you want for your bedtime routine, you're going to set an alarm for that amount of time before the final lights out alarm. This is going to tell you now is the time to start the bedtime routine. Then you're going to set one more alarm one hour before you start your bedtime routine. And this is a sign to you that you have one hour to wrap things up before you have to start your bedtime routine. So for example, my aim is to go to bed by 10 o'clock every night, so I have an alarm that goes off at 10 to say lights out. I have an alarm that goes off at 9 p.m. to say start your bedtime routine. And then I have an alarm that goes off at 8 p.m. telling me, hey, you've got one hour left, so whatever you're doing, wrap it up so that you'll be ready in one hour to start your bedtime routine. When you implement these alarms, it gives you a reminder so that you don't lose track of time and that you can successfully implement your bedtime routine. Now, before I share with you the most common mistakes people make with their bedtime routine, I would love to have you subscribe to my channel. I'm putting out brand new videos just like this one every single week to help you truly master your mind, create high performance habits, and step into your potential. So go ahead and click that subscribe button and like this video while you're there. So the most common mistakes that people make with their bedtime routine is they include some things that can actually impair the mind's ability to fall asleep. So firstly, they don't consider writing down a list of to-do tasks. One of the most common reasons that people fail to go to sleep at night or they feel that monkey mind kick in is because they have all these things that they're thinking about that they need to get done the next day. So I highly recommend that you create what we call a dumping list and keep it beside your bed. Dump all the things that you need to do the next day onto this list to get them out of your head and on paper so that nothing is forgotten. Another common mistake that people make is they use any form of technology within one hour of their lights out time. Technology like your phone, your TV, your tablet, your computer, any of those things contain a blue light that actually stimulates the pineal gland in the brain to stop producing melatonin. Melatonin is a hormone that helps us feel sleepy to go to sleep. And so if you are being stimulated by that light, your body won't be producing the melatonin that you need to be able to fall into a deep and restful sleep on time. So make sure that you're turning off all tech one hour before bed. And if you can, turn off the overhead lights as well. Invest in a red bulb to put in a lamp or a Himalayan salt lamp, or you can even go by candlelight. Those softer orange lights don't stop the melatonin production and it actually helps the body to know that now is time to start winding down and producing the hormones that we need. You definitely want to start dimming the lights, especially the blue overhead lights in your house by 11 p.m. Studies out of Stanford University show that if we are exposed to bright light, this can be the lights in your bathroom, the lights in your bedroom, the lights from your phone, between 11 p.m. and 4 a.m., it actually turns on the depression circuit in the mind and we are more likely to experience symptoms of depression and even anxiety the next day. So make sure that your bedtime routine allows you to limit bright light between the hours of 11 p.m. and 4 a.m. It's also important to keep your bedroom cool at night. The body temperature likes to drop at night to tell us that we're going to sleep. Now you can sleep with as many blankets on your bed as you want, but you want the ambient temperature in your bedroom to be around 68 degrees Fahrenheit so that your body starts to cool and you go into that sleepy mode. 
Lastly, you want to make sure that you black out the room as best as possible. If you have an alarm clock that has LED lights on it, turn it away from you or cover you. If you're using a humidifier or a vaporizer for essential oils, if there's any lights on those, make sure they get covered up. Same thing with the sound machine. That can cause the body to wake back up instead of falling off to sleep at night. The last two mistakes that people make with their bedtime routine actually start way before the bedtime routine. If you drink coffee past 12 p.m., you are decreasing your ability to be able to fall asleep between 9 and 11 p.m. So we want to limit the caffeine consumption that we have after noon because the amount of time that it takes for the body to process and rid itself of caffeine is actually a very long time. The other thing I recommend doing is to stop wearing sunglasses in the afternoon. Sunglasses actually block the UVA and UVB rays from the sun that stimulate the pineal gland to tell it which part of the day we're at and how soon to start preparing the body for sleep. And so if you are wearing sunglasses in the afternoon, you might actually bring on that sleepiness early, which then tempts you to have that afternoon coffee so that you can stay awake and that leads to you being up awake all night long because you still have that caffeine in your body. Now, if you want a meditation that is going to help you visualize your future and start to wind down so that you can go to sleep, I would love to share with you a free guided meditation that I've put together. All you have to do to get instant access is go to meditationwithtiffany.com or click on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.